Hi, I'm Ronan Jones. I'm an editor here at Kosoa 2.0. And welcome to Editor's Pick. This is our web series where we talk about what happens behind the scenes of our articles and of our magazine on a daily basis. And today we're gonna to talk to Adona Kreziu, who is our great writer, reporter, who is based in Berlin right now. And she writes a lot about culture and art uh, in Kosovo and across Europe and transnational culture and art as well. So today we're gonna to talk about her Q&A, her one-on-one -on -one interview with Hamza Batucci, who is a well-known actor, director, producer, activist, from from prison Kosovo, but who now lives in Berlin, Germany, and he is also from the Roma community. So a lot of his activism actually revolves around Romani artists and artwork. And so I'm going to give it over to Adona a little bit. I was her editor on this article, as I'm her editor on most of our articles. So it's always great fun to talk to her. We talk on a regular basis. And it's great fun to see her. So I know because we Hello. just talk by phone. We're so old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. But, Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. But can we just talk a little bit perhaps about why, you know, I know that one of the reasons why we wanted to, we came to this was that we wanted to get more minority content and more representation, especially on different topics like culture and art. And, I, and I'm just gonna let you go ahead and take that question for a bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, in Kosovo, but also in Germany, I kind of moved between these two parts my whole life. There is activism towards um, for minorities and for strengthening minorities and the voice of minorities. For me as a writer, it was important to find an event or a person that kind of critically um, works within this field of activism, that uh, critically um, examines how minorities are placed in the cultural field of politics, but also within the art scene in general. Um, arts uh, encompassing here also film and theater, performative arts and, uh, and, uh, and all kinds of, of, of creative work. And uh, then uh, I found out about Hamza Betuice, who is very active in Berlin, uh, in terms of uh, minority rights, especially for the, for the Romani um, community, uh, also here in Germany, but also in the Balkans. So when I read uh, in the news, but also in different uh, program um, descriptions about his work, I was really keen to talk to him and to ask him about his uh, yeah, life time performance basically uh, or basically his commitment his life commitment towards this issue and also specifically about the way he approaches this issue so yes that was the main intent and as I'm based here in Berlin uh, of course I appreciate still the as a journalist, the one-on-one -on -one contact with the person, not in Kosovo, but this time I thought that would be a very nice opportunity to also um, point out at the transnational realities and transnational cultural productions that take place in a way. And that we know about, but um, get sometimes located only in one national realm. So I really wanted to fill this bridge and um, it really fitted well to also our intention to talk more about minorities in a critical way. It was interesting to me that because um, he's quite, quite a well-known actor and he does a, a lot of activism on the side more I won't say on the side but that that's how he sort of sees himself he describes himself as a cultural midwife and his uh, his fest his film school which goes in doc, uh, parallel to DocuFest and Prisman, I think is such an interesting initiative to make sure that minorities are involved and get something sort of, and learn something themselves. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, sure. So, I mean, best would be if Hamza would talk here as well again, but I can recollect what, what, what he was telling me. Um, for him, the whole activism and art and combining these two forces came very naturally. So it came out of necessity. But before I move to that, uh, maybe about the educational part, um, for him, 
personally coming to Germany 19, in the 1990s, um, early 1990s, was about facing a lot of exclusion again. And he realized that uh, there are forces um, towards the right wing, which makes uh, which make his life a bit um, difficult here in Germany as well. So for him to make it short, it was really uh, learning to use his inner force, which would be acting or, or uh, uh, making a film and being creative and 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 finding maybe a language beyond words um, that uh, empowered him. Uh, so later on, I think during his lifetime, he realized that he wants to empower the minorities, not only through civil society advocation, but also in terms of giving them tool and a method to feel empowered themselves, um, to express themselves uh, beyond words um, with images and also to uh, gain a sort of autonomy um, in doing that. And I think um, that's how Balkan Onions, which is a workshop of youngsters taking place each year, um, uh, where different uh, youngsters from the Romani community come together, not only from Kosovo, um, and they kind of get to explore the medium of film and uh, to explore what film means, but also how you can produce and make films on a lower scale, uh, which are still very, um, very, uh, which still be a high potential to kind of, uh, yeah. Get that. Touch, touch, touch other people's hearts and minds. I think that was the most important thing. I don't know if it was it was intentionally that it run uh, par that it was running parallel to DocuFest. It sounded more like a coincidence, which then turned into a nice partnership and friendship, because uh, he himself uh, it, they started 2015 in Kosovo, and for he himself from for himself it was kind of a, a reconnection to his own roots. Um, he also wanted to 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 bring all the tools that he had collected, how to empower youngsters to Kosovo. Uh, and then it was a positive um, encounter to see that there are other cultural uh, producers in, 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 in the field of culture and film that are open and uh, very welcoming to what he is doing. Because to put it in one phrase, he was uh, telling me that uh, he realized that no one had done this before in Kosovo on this scale. So for him, that was a sign to do it again and also uh, a sign that it is necessary to do it. Yeah. it but it also what was very interesting about the interview was him talking about being an asylum seeker. And he became an activist at eight, really to defend himself and his family. At eight years old, that's pretty young to enter your activism. I think my mm -hmm. earliest activism was probably at four when I uh, demanded my cousin's uh, toy and because he told me I couldn't play with it because I was a girl. But that's it. I'm the only one other than this guy. So can you talk a little bit about <laughs> what he, about the asylum seeker experience in Germany and and what that's like and how that still continues today. Sure, I mean, as you said, as you just told us from your own little anecdote, I think there are small revolutions that we all do kind of in our upbringing, maybe consciously, unconsciously, or depends on how much uh, support we get. Uh, growing up in the 90s, early 90s or here in Germany, and especially in a condition that is very precarious, um, being an, uh, an asylum seeker and waiting for your asylum to go through, uh, is something that is already filled with a lot of tension, with a lot of fear and insecurities. As a child, I think um, you can go around it and about it by uh, still flee, like uh, finding refuge in your own inner world. But what was happening with Hamza was that um, and they were stationed at different cities, uh, which happens um, until today frequently. So different um, refugee asylum residencies. And at some point uh, he saw his friends and families um, being deported. And then um, at some point also uh, it was put um, into question if his family gets deported. Mm -hmm. And um, there were small initiatives by that time, uh, Inter Alia, the um, church asylum in Tübingen. And um, there were people who were helping the family and Hamza to kind of protest their own deportation. So what they did is that they uh, were um, yeah, organizing this protest. He had this first experience with uh, painting uh, perils on some banners, going on the street, being vocal. Um, and uh, one must uh, mention vocal, even though he didn't know the language yet, right? So he didn't know any German, um, which was kind of 
the way or which he always referred to when speaking about this activism that it came out of it came naturally um and it also came out of this condition of exclusion and this angriness of wanting to revolt injustice continued within him the 90s were also in germany a very precarious time in terms of uh, because a lot of asylum um, residencies were burnt by right-wingers which is not something uh, it's not a hidden information it's very uh, public you can research it everywhere i mean uh, every second week there was some incident in an asylum uh, seekers residency because Nazis, neo-Nazis, or only right-wingers were against uh, foreigners coming in from the South. And um, one really interesting thing that Hamza also told me that is in the article is that uh, he uh, learned to, to identify the punks that were protecting and denied his asylum residency as um, anti-fascist um, movements. Um, and you grow up between this, you become automatically, I think, kind of the the, the, the the hotspot of political tension, even though you wanted to flee political tension, probably. And I think that uh, kind of made him, turn him into an activist and then into a cultural midwife, as he said, because you realize that there is a lot of, um, that there is a lot of healing in culture. Yeah. There is a lot of, uh, uh, that, that you can channel your anger and, and uh, through, through culture in a way that benefits others. And, um, yeah, he saw himself as a supporter of that later on. We're going to wrap it up here and we're going to encourage you to read the article. Uh, it's a fantastic piece and it's full of some great photos um, in talking about uh, the first Roma theater uh, in uh, Germany and a reminder that the Romani, uh, Roma minority is the largest minority in Europe, which I didn't realize until I read the article, 12 to 15 million people. And so it's a very enlightening and interesting article. And I I think that it covers culture in a very unique and interesting way and gives us some a very uh, interesting history about Kosovo as well. So thank you very much, Yadona, and thank you You're very welcome. much to you all watching us today. And again, please subscribe to our channel. Also subscribe to our newsletter. Also, and make sure you're reading Kosovo 2.0 every single day. And the links are below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye.